Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Skyrockets from Floodgate Games. Skyrockets is a two to five player real time game in which players are trying to keep, I guess, their fireworks in the sky. It's based on the game Kites, previously from Floodgate Games, although it takes kites to the next level. Kites was about trying to keep your kites afloat in the sky. Skyrockets, I'm not as entirely clear, but the game still works. Let's go ahead and walk through this over here. And the way I'm going to walk through this is basically by playing out two hands of cards. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a few turns. I'm playing two different players here for the sake of this uh, conversation over here, just to make it so you can understand it. But uh, practically speaking, I, I'd have two separate people over here. In the game, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and have hands of cards. Right now, I'm playing the training scenario, which means I currently have four cards per hand, which, you know, number of players, whatever, regardless of the number of players, I'll have four cards. These are the various timers that are going to stay afloat at the beginning of the game. That orange one is going to be on the board over here and our goal is to get the orange one all the way down to the end but we can only flip the orange when the orange one timer has run out which means the orange timer you actively want that one to run out versus the rest of them you don't if the rest of them run out if at any point a timer runs down to zero you're going to go ahead and lose one of your three potential stars so look at that the uh, little teenager over there is now on their phone they're no longer interested in your display because it just wasn't good enough so your goal is to keep everything in the sky, which means right about now we're going to go ahead and start the game. And we'll keep this for the most part on the front camera, or you know what, we'll swap back and forth. Now the card, I did start the timers, so I have to be mindful as we go right now. The red one you usually want to pay the most attention to, because the red one tends to go down the fastest. When I say tens, I mean it's a timer. It has a consistent timer, and the red one will go out the fastest. The good news is we have at least two red cards in our hands. We have a red card over here. We're going to say this player is a star player over here. we got our little star player token, and we're going to go ahead and have them start their thing. Now again, the red one is slowly winding down, so right about now, we're going to go ahead and use the red and purple. We're going to play the red and purple and flip the red and timers. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to play that, draw a new card. Now, I do have to be mindful that the yellow over here is starting to expire. So is the uh, purple. I only have one yellow card in this hand, so I'm just going to give it a second. I'm going to go ahead and play a yellow card, and that's yellow and orange. Orange, unfortunately, can't flip yet until we're done. We're going to go ahead and draw a card. And over here, we only have a red card, so we're going to play the red card. Oh, we could play a, we're going to play the red card over here. Red is going to go ahead and bring the blue timer into play. That's the unfortunate part. We need to be mindful of purple. Purple and green. Green's in play, unfortunately. We have to be careful about that. we got to go ahead and keep drawing our cards. We have to keep things afloat. Orange right about now is a good card to flip. The problem is over here we have to use this orange and red. Let's use the orange and red. So we're going to play the orange and red. We're going to flip these and we're good to go over there. We flip orange onto the next count. So orange is now in three. It has to go two, one, zero. Or should I play out the whole game? Let's play out the whole game. Well, at least until I lose a star. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and flip the uh, purple, the yellow and purple over here. We're going to flip those. Got those. Draw another card. We have to be mindful of red over here. Red and blue can flip. We're going to go ahead and flip red, flip red and blue. Those are perfect. Okay, great. Back to this hand. We've got mindful of purple. Purple and green is not a bad time to play. Let's play purple and green. Purple and green are flipped. Draw a card. And we are good to go on. We need to be careful of blue. So we have to move back to blue in a second. So let's go ahead and play yellow and purple over here. Yellow and purple. Might be a mistake. Let's figure that out soon. We need to do blue over here. We also need to do red. Let's do blue and purple. Blue and purple. Over there. We got that done. We need a red. Red and blue will be bad, so let's do a red and blue because we have to. Red and blue, boom, we got it. Okay, perfect. By the skin of our teeth, that does happen in this game. We have a yellow and green. Yellow and green is a safe one over here. We need to get another blue in play. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we need to do orange and orange and red, orange and red, orange and red. We need a blue, blue. I'm going to run out of, I'm gonna run out of time. I mean, I could have keep going, but... I can't, so now we lose a star. Technically, the game isn't over. We just lose a star over here. We can go ahead and continue playing, but at this point, I'm going to let the whole thing run out because whew, my goal was to get there. The point is, you're trying to keep these timers afloat. You're trying to keep these timers going as you go. To do so, you need to make sure that you have the right cards in your hand. You need to make sure you're on top of your timers. You need to make sure you have every color at every point so you have that flexibility. So there's a lot of control of what's happening. You move your timer down to zero, and then ideally, you get three stars. There's a nice little uh, sheet in this rule book over here. If I grab this, where I can go ahead and say, look, Here's my little sheet over here where I can mark down each of the 30 scenarios and mark down the stars I got for each one, ideally going for three stars in every single scenario because what am I if not a perfectionist? A loser. A loser is what I am. I'm a loser, unfortunately. But anyways, that's how you play Skyrockets. But not actually quite because those of you familiar with kites will know that that's how you play kites. How do you play Skyrockets? Well, Skyrockets is a drop difference. See, Skyrockets will start you off with the training scenario, but from there, you can go to any of the other 30 scenarios, and I'm going to start off, or the 29 scenarios, I guess. I'm going to go ahead and go with Ricochet, because Ricochet is actually one of my favorites over here to show people, to show the versatility of how this game works, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play a single scenario. You see, we're going to have the same mechanism in play as, well, everything I just taught you, but then across those 30 scenarios, things are going to be mixed up. And again, we're just showing you one. There are a whole bunch of these, and your goal is to get 30 stars, 30 stars, three stars in each of the 30 scenarios. So we're going to go ahead and put the yellow timer over here on four. We're going to have all the timers in play. 
We're going to start them off soon, but the first thing we're going to do, we're going to move this up a bit so we can have everything in play, is we're going to go ahead and create a little pyramid of cards that represents 15 cards. One, let's go ahead and, I guess, let's just flip it over this way. We're going to create a little pattern of cards over here. One, two, three, four, five, and let's just keep it, I guess, we're going to keep it on camera to a degree. I probably should do it like this. There, there, there. And there, okay, great, perfect. Then we're gonna do this over here. And you're gonna be moving our start marker around as we go. So you're gonna see how this plays out, but it totally changes the game. It totally changes the way you approach this game. Although I will say you will have different results depending on how you do it. So for example, you'll see that the red is down here. So we need to be mindful, there's actually less red in here than normal. Let's go ahead and start this off. We're gonna go ahead and start off by flipping the various timers as we normally do, but now, and it's going to be hard for you to see from front and top, but let's just go ahead and play it out. So right about now, I need to get this all the way to the bottom, but I need to be mindful because I need to be careful of the red because the red's going to run out very quickly, but I need to get this down. So I'm going to give it a second and then start flipping. We're going to move this down over here. We're going to flip these over here. Probably should have started this time over here. Then we're going to move this down over here. We're going to flip this. We can flip yellow. Then we're going to move down to red. We're going to go down here. We flip these over here like so. We're doing good. We need to get to purple. Purple's going to be over here. Purple and green. That's fine. Uh, we're going to get to purple and orange, which I think is fine. We need to be mindful of blue. So we're going to move to orange and yellow. We're only going to flip orange because yellow is still going. We'll move to blue and orange. Blue and orange is fine. We're going to move to red and orange. Red and orange. We're doing fine. You're moving around this little timer. Whoops, you got to be careful of stuff like that happening. We're moving this little token around the grid to see what we can do. Uh, we need to be mindful of green. So green and blue over there because you can only move to adjacent cards over here. We need to do Orange and red, beautiful, beautiful. And again, we'll do this until we run out because I'm a masochist that way. Uh, we're gonna go to, we have a yellow over here. Let's go to red and orange again. That actually, the red and orange can go back and forth as we need. We're gonna have yellow and orange over here. Yellow can now officially flip and orange flips over here. Uh, blue and orange is probably ready to go. Let's do blue and orange over here. Blue and orange. We're going to pop down to blue and yellow, which means just blue. We're going to pop down to purple and red because they're about to both die. We got them over there. We're going to pop up to yellow and green, just flipping green. Orange and blue, keeping everything afloat over here. We got a little bit of a panic going on. Everything's a little bit safe just for the second. You need to learn the grid as you go, but it totally changes. You're not playing cards. You have a degree of planning and predictability around it. We're going to go orange and red. Got that. We're going to go purple and green. Got that. We're going to go back to, uh, let's go back to just red over here. Red over here. Then red and orange. Boom, perfect. We can go down to green and blue. We're doing fine. We're trying to keep things afloat while we slowly move to yellow. We're gonna do a little bit of blue over here. We're gonna do a purple and red again. Perfect, okay. You can't see how bad these timers are going, but they are going, and we have the yellow. Yellow's finally expired, so we're gonna go back to yellow, flipping onto the two over here. We're doing great, we're doing great, Alex. Talk yourself up, pep, pep, pep talk. Blue and orange, okay. We're gonna run out of red soon. We can be mindful of that. We're gonna go to red and orange over here, flip those. Purple and green, purple and green, that gets us flipped under that. I'm gonna flip a little bit of orange back to us. Okay, got it, doing great, doing great. This is, you can skip to the review at any point you want, you know, them just here for the show. We're gonna do a bit of a red and orange over here, red and orange, and then a bit of purple and green. A little bit of yellow coming soon, but not ready yet. We need some orange again, some orange back to there. Probably need some red and orange soon as well. Keeping our eye on things. Purple and green again, purple and green. A little bit of red and orange, unfortunately. Going a bit a bit of got, got things doing great over here. We'll do yellow and red in a second. That'll move us down to one. Okay, and yellow and red. Boom. We're down to the second timer over there. We just need to do one more timer. We're gonna do orange and red. That orange almost got me over there. Uh, we're gonna do blue and green. We're gonna flip those two over here. We need to get back to purple. 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 We need to do these two over here, and then purple and red. Purple and red. Back to these two. Back to these two. Okay. We got that was very close over there. You can't see again. You can't see as much. I'm trying to keep you as in the loop as possible. We're gonna do purple, blue, and green. Okay. We could just do regular blue. Flip flap that back. We're gonna do purple and red in a second, but we'll just give it a give it a breather. Give it a breather. Okay. And purple and red over here. Just flip those timers. We got a green over here to get that back in play. I think we're gonna make it. I think we're fine. We're gonna jump back to purple and red over here. Get those back in play just to keep those nice and consistent. Uh, we have a yellow coming up right now. We're going to go ahead and hit yellow and boom. Three stars. Three stars. Now, granted, I'm playing a solo. Try doing it with multiple players. But that's basically the idea of skyrockets over here. I always want to call it fire rockets. Skyrockets. That's the idea of skyrockets. You're playing the same basic game, but suddenly there's a rules twist. And every single scenario has a different rules twist. Some are more impactful than others. Some are more strategic. Some are more chaotic. Some are energy-based. Some are based, I don't know what I meant, but energy-based. Some are just, they all give them kinds of scenarios in the game. But we're going to go ahead and move to the actual review right about now because I feel this is a reasonable time to move to the review, starting off with ease of play. Rulebook's incredibly short. Each card has its own little rules adjustment on it. 
it plays in about five minutes, as you've just seen. That's right, I'm going to go ahead and log two plays of Skyrockets right now. One that I won, one that I lost, because that's two more plays. That's how I get so many games played every year. I just log all the ones I play on camera. But past that, let's go ahead and talk about this. Easy play, very easy. It's a very easy game to dive into. Uh, it, the rules are short and sweet. The scenarios are just a single card of rules, nothing crazy, and just uh, plays in an incredibly accessible time. Uh, handles two to five players generally pretty well, although you will have different experiences at different player counts. Uh, I, I play this at as low as two and as high as five, uh, and then two is basically usually a very strategic game. Two is very, very strategic, and as you can see, by the way, while it's listed as two to five players, some of these do play fairly natural as one player. A little easier, but natural. Two players tends to be more strategic, higher player counts tends to be more chaotic. Some of the scenarios do base their uh, cards or rules based on the player count, most of them do not though, so that's what you're going to have over there. As far as what I like, don't like, and conceal is not liking, starting off with what I like, which is an incredibly simple system that plays incredibly quickly, teaches incredibly quickly, it's fast, fun, and frenetic, and it just has scenario-based play. And that's the thing I'm going to focus on, because the game itself, it's fun, it's fast, it's easy to play, it's just all good things, but there's not a ton of nuance to say about it. If you've seen this game already, you can get a sense of what's going on, you can get a sense of what this game is, because... Well, you've seen what this game has to offer. But then as soon as you move into the scenario-based play, that's where this game stands out. That's where this game has the highlights for me, because this game takes the system of Kites. And Kites was a game I enjoyed. I played Kites way back, I want to say maybe Pax Unplugged, like two years ago when it first was coming out. I played Kites, I liked it, and I was like, I never need to own this game. Because Kites, to me, was a play it when you have the opportunity, but it's not a game I'm ever going to come back to. It's not a game I wanted to dive back into. The flip side, though, when I played Skyrockets at Gen Con, so I played this at Gen Con, I have a chance, and now it showed up over here, and I've played it, you know, ten times today at least. But Skyrockets, to me, on the other hand, is the system that Kites gives you, but with all the reasons in the world to hold on to it, to replay it, to challenge yourself, to get three stars in every single scenario. Kites, to me, is a game that you play it here and there, and maybe maybe get three, four plays in a cross, whatever, before you're bored of it, uh, versus Skyrockets is 30 plays minimum, and getting three stars, as you've seen, is not always easy. I think you can get 60 plays out of this before you're like, okay, great, I've seen what this system has to offer, and it's still good to pull out and play for others. To me, this game, the scenario-based play, takes us from a game that's a cute little system that I never need to play again to an actually rewarding system that gives you a reason to keep on playing it. It gives you rules adjustments to keep on playing it. It's surprisingly creative for the amount of stuff going on in there. And I haven't seen all the scenarios yet, but I've played a whole bunch of them and the amount of creativity behind the scenarios it's, re it's reasonably impressive that they haven't have 30 scenarios, and in theory, you could release a pack and have more rules and adjustments. The scenario-based play is the thing I'm going to focus on for Skyrockets. It is the system of kites, but with an actual reason to get this game. With not to say kites, there's no reason to get. For me, kites was a, a coffee table game and not one I need to actually play myself. Skyrockets is a game I want to fully play through. As far as what I don't like in the system... Nothing per se. There's nothing really I don't like here. It just it is a limited experience. It is still the game that Kites was. It is still the real-time, fast, phonetic mayhem. And the scenarios give you a reason to keep on playing it, and they do mix it up. But there's just a limit to what you can actually do with this. It's a real-time, fast-paced, phonetic party game. That's it. Nothing I don't like about it, just it caps out at how much of an experience it can give me. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all, real-time. If you don't like real-time, this may not be for you. If you are frustrated with other players when they make bad mistakes, this might not be a game for you. You will lose stars in this game, and you will think to yourself, I perfectly was in control. I had this game, and it's because you lost track of the fact that you don't have any red or blue cards in your hand, and you waited too long before letting go back. You will always have someone to blame when you play this game. You will always have that ability to turn to someone else at the table and be like, you were the slow one. And if you do that, you shouldn't be playing this game. You should not be playing this game. This is a fun, fast-paced game. You will lose. Who cares? Own it, move on, play the next game, and if you don't like it, don't play with that person. This is a game that's about the fun and the charm and the chaos. You have to be okay losing, or, or you probably shouldn't be here, or just play it solo like I did and be in full control of your own destiny. As far as final thoughts on Skyrockets, I really like this. I really enjoy it. To me, again, like I said already, I kind of touched upon this multiple times throughout the review. This is the game that I would have wanted Kites to be. I thought Kites was very clever. Kites, I think, is a game I've played five or six times, but I never bothered owning it because I just... It's not a game I'm going to pull out, but I've had the opportunity to play it at conventions, at other people's houses, and it's a fast, easy game to table. I like Kites. Never bothered reviewing it, though, but because I just don't know if I cared about Kites. Skyrockets gives me that system better. It gives me a good system. Now, it still caps out for me. It is a 3.5 out of 5. I kind of debated having it higher, but I just think there's only so much the system does. 
But like, it's a 3.5 out of 5 that I think it reminds me probably similar to Rolling Realms. Rolling Realms is a game that I also don't think Rolling Realms is a great game, but I've given Rolling Realms like 40 plus plays because of how simple and compelling it was. And I think Skyrocket's in the same place. I don't think this is a game that's going to blow your mind, but I do think it's a game that for the price point, the amount of time it will give you, the kind of experience it can give, that ease of pulling it out and just teaching people in two seconds and having them pulled into multiple games in a row, I think it is both a 3.5 out of 5 to me, but also a game that I really recommend you pick up and try that's a good game to introduce people to gaming. So I think it takes everything Kites did and it makes it into a, just a better game. You'll, and I highly recommend you start off. The One of the downsides I'll say is that I find frequently you're going to want to start off with that training scenario, whatever it is. You're going to start off with that training scenario just because it is the simplest way to teach the game. And then from there, play the training scenario and then just shuffle it up and grab any other scenario and be like, boom, we're playing scenario 9 now. Like it, You want that training scenario to get people like the system under their belt because otherwise you're starting off with rules that don't necessarily fully make sense to you but it's training scenario to so much to the game and then any of any of other you know 29 other scenarios to be able to dive into it and have an overall just very satisfying experience so a 3.5 out of 5 that i arguably think should be better than that but still it's a very very good game as far as other game recommendations first of all the crew quest for planet 9 if you're looking for another scenario based game that is also cooperative also works from more three to five players than two to five players the crew is a trick taking game that will just give you a lot of fun as you try to again work together and again do not blame other people at the table or you are there for the wrong reasons and if you're looking for something with a drop of real time in your cooperative experience i think magic maze from sit down games is a delightfully fun real time game as you work together to try to gather the things you need from the mall as you steal, but you shouldn't be stealing, and then break out, all while managing your own part and piece in that puzzle. And again, a common thread in all these three games is if you're going to blame others, play the game solo or not at all. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.